Scott Geekus is here with us. He's with Walsh Trading. He's in Chicago at the edge of the CME group there, uh, the trading floor there. What do you make of these uh, futures deliveries here? A big, uh, big jump over here in the corn. Um, do you think there's still quite a bit of corn out in the country? Yeah, it, it kind of looks like there is a little bit of more corn out there. But yeah, as far as the markets are moving back and forth here today, you know, uh, pretty much all the grains traders are pretty much short. Uh, reducing contracts a little bit. We expect them to start reducing contracts moving into this report on Thursday. So that report on Thursday is going to be very, very instrumental. It's going to give you a little bit more uh, an idea of which way these markets are going to end up. So with that being said, though, I want to point out something in the option market with the corn as well as the wheat. This is the first time in a long time that the put skew is elevated a lot more than the actual call skew. So you typically with the grain markets, what I mean by that is the upside calls typically hold a little bit more premium, a little bit more upside value to them. So with the corn market going the other way, having a little bit more premium in the downside puts, I mean, that just confirms that traders are short with the expectation that something other than something completely wild and crazy happening, you know, we expect a little bit more of a downside movement. At least that's what the, the option flow is telling all the traders here today. All right. Has anybody been talking about some of their estimates or what could be anticipated in this next report when it comes to either supply or the demand side? Well, that's very interesting because uh, the numbers are all literally all over the place. And that's just due to the USDA being very unclear of the numbers that they've been reporting for the last few months. So yeah, that's what I mean. The option elevation is warranted right now. You're looking at implied volatility being about anywhere between 30 to 50 percent above the 20 day historical volatility. So. With that being said, no one really has a good estimate of what these numbers are going to come out. So anyone's guess is as good as anyone else's guess. So we just have to wait until those numbers come out. Sure. Well, it leads to more volatility and more uncertainty. Just, uh, just exactly what this market doesn't need right now. Scott, we'll take a break and we'll be back in just a moment. And be sure and stay with us here on the market. Last half hour, when we checked these uh, livestock markets, they were kind of uh, mixed to a little bit weaker, particularly over there in the hog complex. Right now, we've got the live cattle. And by the way, today is a show list day. The live cattle market uh, just kind of trending along here on the higher side, but not by much because October's up 10 at 94.97. December is up 8 at 99.83. We saw some weakness in these contracts earlier. So we're uh, just kind of drifting along here in a light trade. One of the things that the trade has pointed out to us several times already throughout the whole morning is in light and thin volumes like this, uh, these markets get pushed around a little bit, and that is kind of what we're seeing here today. The October feeder cattle contract is down a dollar and thirteen cents at one twenty nine seventy eight. November down ninety seven, and the January is down fifty two. And in the hog complex, we've got October up thirty eight at sixty three eighty eight. December's down a dollar and thirty eight cents at sixty one ten. February is down a dollar fifty seven at sixty nine twenty eight. But then you go out to uh, April, and we're only down fifty. And you go to May, and we're up twenty five. So. Um, I don't know. What what all does this indicate to us here in this lean hog complex, Scott? Yeah, well, the lean hog complex right now is absolutely confusing everybody. So if you look at it, what traders were waiting for is all these exports to finally show up. So if you look at the exports for July, that was the highest, the second highest on record that China had the exports come in. African swine fever completely is still spreading, still not contained. So with that expectation, we're expecting those exports to even come in a little bit more stronger than what they already have been. So you also have Mexico starting to have a little bit of export campaign as well. So with all that, that is pointing to a little bit bullish catalyst. Traders are still net long, but the prices are still continue to be a little bit suppressed. So it, that's why it's a little bit confusing. So even when we have these exports come in, you know, prices are still a little bit suppressed. So a lot of people are just scratching their heads with the hog market right now. You know, Sal, you made a good point about African swine fever. Now it's being confirmed in the Philippines where they had to cull a little over 7,000 head of hogs over the, uh, over the weekend and today. Um, should the market be paying closer attention to this at this point, or is it still too early in the game? 
Uh, for a fundamental reason, you would say yes. But right now, the chart is completely broken, completely has a complete downtrend. So the price action is not necessarily following suit with the fundamentals. So that's what I mean uh, when, you know, your theory doesn't necessarily hold true all the time. So you just got to be very careful and always protect your position one way or the other. Okay, let's talk about the cattle trade. Last week, uh, we wrapped up trade and some of that cleanup trade was just under $100 at 99 um, you, this weakness that's in the cattle complex, technical, fundamental, or both? Uh, it's a little bit of both, uh, more or less technical uh, and short-term driven. You're also watching the cash prices. The cash prices are trading pretty light, pretty low, between 99 and 100. That's really suppressed. So we got to wait until those cash cattle prices start to climb a little bit. But otherwise, you also had that fear of the plant-based fad that's going on. It's starting to take a little bit more front stage. It's also pressuring the cattle market as well. Interesting. So is a lot of the trade starting started to talk about this this um, this alternative to the regular meat? Quite a bit. I yeah. I, I on a personal level, I don't think it's going to make too much of an effect in a longer term. But because it's in the news, because it's coming across all these headlines, it's definitely having an effect on the short term, and that's why you see prices a little bit spiky here and there. But just like you said earlier there's really not that much volume. So any type of decent sized order is going to push the market one way or the other. Okay, Scott, hope you have a good afternoon. Scott Geekus there at Walsh Trading at the edge of the trading floor in Chicago, making a very good point about uh, how the news and some of these other things are starting to take a little bit of an effect on the